Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In a previous episode, we looked at a classic remake of an oldie but a goodie, Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse on the Sega Genesis. That made me want to take a look at other remakes from classic video games. In this episode, we just do that with a look at Capcom's classic Strider on the Sega Genesis that was rebooted in 2014 of the same name by Double Helix Games. Sega was able to get the rights from Capcom for the home port of the arcade, which was released in 1990 for the Sega Genesis. It was the first 8 megabit cartridge for the system and quickly went on to be a bestseller and cult classic. It received excellent reviews as it was an almost perfect port from its arcade counterpart. The game demanded skilled gameplay and memorization of the enemies in order to survive as the difficulty is rather unforgiving for after the first level. Remember, this was in the arcades first and at a high difficulty to make money from the player at probably 3-5 to five minute intervals. Playing as Strider Hyru, you explore environments to make your cipher or blade stronger and gain extra health. Pretty much a straightforward path from A to B until the very end when you battle Grandmaster Mio. Simple but addicting to finish the game with less than 30 minutes for the best players. Being developed by Capcom USA and being super influenced by Shadow Complex at the time, development for a reboot of Strider began. Bringing in more exploration action to modern side scrollers with a hint of sword swinging for the main character can be difficult. Priced as a budget title, the game came out with high praise for its new take. Playing the game itself, I don't feel that the game is really Strider. Yes, all the elements are there but Strider is not meant to be a bullet-absorbing tank. I know there are players out there much better than I am at this game, but you must have a different mindset altogether in playing this game. The game itself prevents you from a traditional speedrun as you slash your way to victory. Instead, you are left with taking out minions and usually taking many hits in the process. Yes, your lifeline has been extremely extended to compensate, but it's almost impossible to maneuver like a ninja without taking damage. The visuals are gorgeous, but I do miss the colorful range of levels from the original. They are so exotic that they had their own life and feeling to them as separate levels. Most of the 2014 reboot felt like we were always fighting in a shade or some sort of darkness that made each level similar to its last in visual appeal. I do love the revamped attacks, gameplay, and feel of Strider, especially his angle blade attacks. I love how you can attack at virtually every angle, even when jumping. That one detail alone saves the game for me and has helped me make me feel like it's actually Strider. The added attacks make you feel like a super ninja, but in a 2D shooter. Overall, Strider Reboot for 2014 gets a 7.0 out of 10 for Double Helix's nice try at a modern, darker look at Strider, but in the end made a completely different game. Although I appreciate the artistic look at the brand, I still feel the Sega Genesis is still the version of choice, besides the arcade original, of course, if you want to play a true Strider video game. That's it for me on this episode on Beho Reviews. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg. Take us out of here. Yeah.